Welcome everybody to St Andrew's Uxbridge, our online worship for this Sunday, the 18th of October. And today is the day in the church's year when we remember and give thanks for St Luke, the author of the Gospel and also actually of the Acts of the Apostles. So we'll be thinking of him and giving thanks for his Gospel and his ministry. Please do join in our first hymn if you're able to at home. secrets are him. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The saints were faithful unto death and now dwell in the heavenly kingdom forever. As we celebrate their joy, let us bring to the Lord our sins and weaknesses and ask for his mercy. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The collect and then the reading set for this day when we celebrate St Luke. Almighty God, you call Luke the physician, whose praise is in the Gospel, to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit, and through the wholesome medicine of the Gospel, give your Church the same love and power to heal, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our readings for this week, which are read for us by Raymond and Craig, and then Sue, who will be reading the New Testament reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speeches sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Psalms. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name to lie his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised he is more to be feared than all gods. For all the gods of nations are but idols, it is the Lord who made the heavens. Honour and majesty are before him, power and splendour are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord, honour and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his names, bring offerings and come into his courts. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations so that the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the fields be joyful and all that is in them. Let all the trees of the wood shout for the joy before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth with righteousness. He will judge the world and the peoples with his truth. This is the word of the Lord. This reading is from Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. This letter is from Paul, Silas and Timothy. We are writing to the church in Thessalonia, to you who belong to the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God give you grace and peace. The faith of the Thessalonian believers. We always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly as we pray to our God and Father about you. We think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power. For the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true. And you know of our concern for you from the way we lived, and we were with you. So you received the message with joy from the Holy Spirit, in spite of the severe suffering it brought to you. In this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. As a result, you have become an example to all the believers in Greece, throughout both Macedonia and Achaia. And now the word of the Lord is going out from you to people everywhere even beyond Macedonia and Achaia. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about it, for they keep talking about the wonderful welcome you gave us and how you turned away from idols to serve the living and the true God. And they speak of how you are looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven. Jesus, whom God raised from the dead, he is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, Eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the particular features of faith is the way in which it tells a story by reminding its followers of what has happened in the past. Faith offers us perspective and helps us locate ourselves in the present. This is just one of the ways in which faith can help make sense of life. Within the story of how faith has worked in the past, there are some lines and incidents that particularly stand out. People or moments that shine a special light on life and guide us accordingly. This day, the 18th of October, is a day when the Church remembers and gives thanks for one such life, that of St Luke, author of the Gospel that bears his name, and author also of a second volume, The Acts of the Apostles. We know that Luke was a dear friend of the Apostle Paul. He is mentioned by Paul three times in his letters, and furthermore appears to have been Paul's only companion when Paul was in prison. Luke, rather, is described by Paul as the beloved physician, and as a result has long been the patron saint of doctors and all those involved in healing ministry. At the very beginning of the Gospel, Luke states that he is writing an orderly account of things that have happened, and the fact that he writes a second volume, the Acts, is testimony to Luke's sense of history and time. His writing is also commended for the quality of the Greek that he used. He was obviously a very well-educated person. Once people get familiar with the four Gospels that we have, they may well be asked what is their favourite. I don't know if a poll along these lines has ever been conducted, but I do know that without Luke's Gospel, we would all be deprived of some of the best-loved parts of the New Testament. Imagine no Annunciation to Mary, no shepherds at Jesus' birth, no story of Pentecost, no Good Samaritan, no Prodigal Son, no Emmaus Road, no Road to Damascus because these are all stories that are unique to Luke, and without which we would feel correspondingly bereft. In contrast to the other Gospel writers, Luke is a Gentile, and his writing makes clear that the good news of salvation is for all people, regardless of gender, social position, or nationality. He has a particular emphasis on the role of women, and a particular concern for the poor. In today's Gospel reading, Luke tells how Jesus appointed 70 others and sent them in pairs ahead of where he himself was shortly to go. Matthew and Mark talk of sending out 12, presumably the 12 tribes of Israel, imagine that. 
Whilst Luke, what he appears to have in mind, are the 70 nations descended from Noah in Genesis chapter 10. And again, this simple fact helps emphasize the mission to the world. The disciples are sent ahead in pairs, and this is because the precepts of charity are twofold, to love God and to love your neighbor. And charity cannot exist except between persons. Love entails reaching out to one another. So to go in pairs is in a way to embody the love of neighbor. And in the instructions that follow, they are wholly dependent on the hospitality of others and like to eat whatever they are offered. Another indication that the universality of the gospel message supersedes Jewish dietary laws. In this short passage, it's striking that nowhere does Luke talk of success. Rather, the message is the same for those who reject or accept the pairs of visiting preachers. And the message is this, namely that the kingdom of God has come near. And isn't it interesting that the role of those he sends ahead is to prepare the way for the Lord himself? Jesus then follows in the wake of those who preach him. The ground is prepared, and then Jesus can come and to make his home in our souls. It's rather like the call associated with John the Baptist, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert the paths of our God. We hear words and encounter lives that challenge us, and through their agency we become more receptive to the truth. So what I want to suggest is that Luke's description of sending missionaries on ahead can allow us to reflect on how we might act like, act, might act like that for others, and who also has had that role in our own lives. But perhaps more significant still, is the thought that well-prepared ground means that when we encounter Jesus, he feels a familiar figure. So much of the life of faith is actually, I think, a matter of recognition, of recognizing where God has already been at work in our lives and catching up with what he's already been doing. This small gospel passage set for St. Luke's day to day has helped me to be reminded of that truth, that the ground is prepared, and that Jesus then comes and makes his home among us, and that when he does so, he's a familiar figure, somebody whom somehow we've known all along. We've discovered something that is both new and deeply familiar. May that be true for all of us this week. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now our prayers of intercessions are led for us today by Rosemary. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church and the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Liberating God, you call your church to the service of your son in bringing good news to the poor, health to the sick and reconciliation to all. Hear our prayers for all who offer chaplaincy in our health service and hospitals, that they may support the stressed, comfort the suffering, and speak up for those whose voices are not heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick and gave them new life. So we ask you to be with all healthcare workers, people who work in the emergency services and carers, as they act as agents of your healing touch. 
in these difficult and desperate times, keep them strong, yet loving and caring. Protect their health, and when their work is done, be with them in their tiredness, weakness and tears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giver of wisdom, pour out your gifts on the decision makers in our society, and especially local and national politicians, civil servants and health service leaders. We pray for those who work in our local hospitals, care homes and community services. And we give you thanks for all who serve in them. Be with them in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we hold before you all those in need of healing, comfort and encouragement, especially those who have asked for our prayers or who we now think about in a moment of silence. Calm the anxious mind, bring balm to the depressed spirit and strengthen the weakened body that all who suffer in mind, body or spirit may know your healing presence surrounding and holding them. And be with those who have lost a loved one recently or who commemorate the death of a loved one who died at this time in previous years. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for all those who do not have access to the same level of health care that we do. Help those international organisations and those working in them who seek to improve and support health care systems that are overstretched or struggling. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the God of peace sanctify you. May he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before him at the coming of our Lord Jesus with his saints. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
and give us food to nourish our bodies. May the bread and wine of our Eucharist become for us the sacrament of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord of our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks that your glory is revealed in St. Luke and all the saints. In their lives you have given us an example of faithfulness. In their holiness we find encouragement and hope. In our communion with them we share the unity of your kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave it thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As Jesus himself taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we, we are, are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and the simplicity of heart, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who with spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and truth and gentleness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.